Hey everyone, we all connect to servers, databases, and Kubernetes clusters. We use passwords, SSH keys, maybe a vault somewhere storing all our secrets. But here is something most engineers don't fully understand X509 certificates. You have probably seen the term, maybe in your browser, maybe in some config file, but what exactly are they? How do they work? X509 certificates have been securing the internet since the 1980s. HTTPS, TLS, secure email, all built on certificates. So why aren't we using them for infrastructure access? And why did we end up with vaults full of passwords and SSH keys instead? In this video, we'll break down all of this. What X509 certificates actually are, how vaults work, and the problem with storing static credentials that can be stolen, rotated, and leaked. And then we'll look at how Teleport solves this with a vault-free approach using short-lived certificates. This video is sponsored by Teleport. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with X509. And you have probably seen this before. When you visit a website and click on that padlock icon in your browser, that's an X509 certificate. An X509 certificate is basically a digital ID card. It proves who you are. Think of it like a passport. Your passport has your name, your photo, and expiration date, and a stamp from a government that says, this is legit. An X509 certificate works the same way. It contains an identity, like a domain name or a user. It has an expiration date, and it's signed by a certificate authority. Now, a certificate authority is a trusted third party, like a government issuing passports. The certificate authority or CA verifies your identity and then signs your certificate. That signature is what makes the certificate trustworthy. Now, your browser comes preloaded with a list of trusted CAs. Companies like DigiCert, Let's Encrypt, or Komodo. So when you connect to google.com over HTTPS, Google server sends you its X509 certificate. Your browser checks, is this certificate valid? Is it expired? Was it signed by a CA that I trust? If yes, the connection is secure. And this has been working since the 1980s. Every secure connection on the internet uses this. So if X509 certificates are so great, why aren't we using them to access our servers and databases? The answer is simple. It was too hard to manage. Think about it. Every certificate has an expiration date. That's a feature, not a bug. It's what makes certificates so secure. But now imagine you have 500 servers. Each server needs a certificate, each engineer needs a certificate, and that's thousands of certificates to issue, track, and renew before they expire. In the early days, there was no easy way to do this. No automation, no tooling. You would have to manually generate certificates, distribute them to servers, keep track of expiration dates, and renew them on time. Miss a renewal, your server goes down. Or worse, engineers get locked out of production during an incident. So we took a shortcut. Instead of certificates, we use something simpler. Passwords and SSH keys. Static credentials that don't expire. Store them somewhere safe and you're done. And that somewhere safe became the vault. So what exactly is a vault? A vault is basically a secure storage system for your secrets. Passwords, SSH keys, API tokens, database credentials, all the sensitive stuff you don't want lying around in config files or sticky notes. Think of it like a bank safe. You put your valuable inside, lock it up, and only authorized people can access it. Let me walk you through how it works. First, an admin stores credentials in the vault, say the root password for your production database. Now an engineer needs to access the database. They authenticate with the vault, maybe through SSO or multi-factor auth. The vault checks, does this engineer have permission to access this credential? If yes, the vault releases the credentials to them. This is called checking out a secret. The engineer uses the credential to connect to the database, does their work and ideally checks the credential back in. The vault logs everything, who accessed what, when, and for how long. And vaults do solve real problems. They are better than storing passwords in plain text. They are better than sharing SSH keys over Slack. They centralize your secrets in one place. They give you access control and an audit trail. Companies like Hashicorp Vault, CyberArk, or Beyond Trust, they have built entire businesses around this. But here's the thing. 
the credentials inside the wall, they are all static. They still exist and that creates a whole new set of problems. The core problem is this. Wall secure the storage of credentials, but the credentials themselves still exist. Let's break this down. First, static credentials can be stolen. Once an engineer checks out a password or SSH key, it's on their machine. So if their laptop gets compromised, those credentials are exposed. Doesn't matter how secure your vault is. The secret is now out on the wild. Second, credentials need to be rotated. Best practice says, rotate your passwords every 30, 60, 90 days. But in reality, most organizations take an average of 27 days just to rotate a leaked secret. And many SSH keys, they have never been rotated, ever. Third, credentials pile up over time. Large enterprises have thousands of SSH keys, sometimes over a million. Most organizations don't even have a complete inventory. Which keys are active, who created them, what do they have access to, nobody knows. Fourth, there is an operational friction. Every time an engineer needs access, they go to the wall, check out credentials, do their work, check them back in. Multiply that across every server, every database, every Kubernetes cluster. It slows everyone down. And what do engineers do when the security slows them down? They find workarounds. They store credentials locally. They share keys over Slack. They create backdoors. So what if we went back to certificates? Remember X509, the technology that has been securing the internet since the 1980s. What if we use that for infrastructure access instead of storing credentials in a vault? And that's exactly what Teleport does. But first, let me quickly explain what PAM or PAM is. PAM stands for Privileged Access Management. It's how organizations control who can access critical systems. Your production servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters. Basically, the keys to the kingdom. Traditional PAM solutions use vaults to store and manage those credentials. Teleport takes a different approach. They call it vault-free PAM. Here is the idea. Instead of storing static passwords or SSH keys, Teleport issues short-lived certificates on demand. Let me walk you through how it works. Teleport runs its own internal certificate authority. Remember, a CA is that trusted party that signs and issues certificates. Step one, you want to access a server. You run a command called TSH login. This opens up your company's SSO. By the way, SSO stands for single sign-on. It's a system that lets you log in once and access multiple applications without entering credentials again and again. If you want to dive deeper into how SSO works, do check out my previous video on it. I'll link it in the description. So your SSO could be Okta, Google Workspace, GitHub, Active Directory, whatever your organization uses. Step two, you authenticate with the SSO. Once verified, the SSO sends back your identity claims, your username, what groups you belong to, your role assignments. And then Teleport's auth service then takes those claims and issues your certificate. This certificate contains your identity, what resources you are allowed to access, your role metadata, the CA signature, and importantly, an expiration timestamp. Usually just a few hours. That certificate is delivered to your local machine. And here's the nice part. It works automatically with your existing tool. SSH, kubectl, psql, mysql, nothing changes in your workflow. And finally, when the certificate expires, it's done. You need access again, you authenticate again and get a fresh certificate. Let me show you how simple this is in practice. First, you install the Teleport client on your machine. It's called TSH. To log in, you run TSH login followed by your Teleport proxy address. This opens your browser and takes you to your company's SSO, Okta, Google, whatever you use. You authenticate like you normally would. Once you're authenticated, that's it. Teleport issues your certificate and stores it locally. Now to SSH into your server, you just run TSH SSH user at hostname. No passwords to copy, no credentials to check, no vault to visit. The same approach works for Kubernetes clusters, database like Postgres and MySQL, and even Windows Server. One login, one certificate, access to everything you are authorized for. And when your certificate expires in few hours, you run TSH login again and get a fresh one. That's it. That's the entire workflow. X509 certificates have been securing the internet since the 1980s. 
but for infrastructure access, we stored static credentials in vaults instead. And that created problems. Teleport flips this around. Short-lived certificates on demand, no vault, no stored secrets. Certificates expires automatically and refresh when you re-authenticate. If you want to try this out, check out Teleport's fault-free PAM solution. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching and if you found this useful, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this.